Today is all calculus, my friend. The Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. The Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, here is the equation. Now, the way I have it written, I have four pi v squared out here. There, there actually is a reason for that, but as you'll see in the next page, that handout puts the four pi inside of this term with the three halves, and, and so you have a square root term and then you have that. So just so you don't think, oh, they're different. Which one's right? They are identical. Okay. Key things about the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Number one, this is telling us about the distribution of speeds. So I can take this and this is telling me what percentage it, well, not actually what percentage, but or yeah, it is. If I take the number of molecules and multiply by this, that tells me how many molecules I'll have at each speed if I just have a gas that is contained in a region. So you can see that it depends on temperature. Where do you see temperature in that equation? Uh, I see it in the exponent and the denominator of the first thing. Okay, so it appears two different places. Temperature appears in the denominator of the exponent and in this denominator here. So this is a function of temperature. You know, my equation actually says it's just a function of speed, but it's not just a function of speed because this whole graph will shift with temperature. So the shape will look roughly like this, no matter what the temperature is, but it'll shift left or right. And expand or contract. Yes. And, and, yes. So it's really a function of both temperature and speed, but we, we talk about it. At a given temperature, this is the distribution of speed. So that's why it just shows as a function of speed. Here. All right. So we're going to be doing calculus with this. And the integrals aren't simple. I always call these Gaussian integrals. They're not actually Gaussian integrals. Gaussian integrals are integrals from minus infinity to plus infinity that involve e to the x squared dx. This has an e to the x squared right, the exponential to the v squared dv. But there, what, what's the minimum speed you can have for a particle? Zero. Zero. So this isn't going from minus infinity to plus infinity, it's going from zero. And if you want to be real, honest, and frank, the maximum speed turns out to be the speed of light. Which is not it. But for our purposes, we just say to infinity. Because the curve is going to be so close to zero when we get out close to the speed of light that it might as well be zero. So you just integrate on from speed of light to infinity and it's not changed. Okay. So how do we do this integral? Now, in previous years, I've actually gone through the derivation of how you do that, but I am not going to. What you need to know is how to go from an integral to the answer, right? And so basically what we have here is an integral table on the sheet. In fact, I printed these out for you and left them in my office. Give me a second so I can bring you your own copy of the sheet. Will, on the exam, will we have this integration? Yes. Oh, thank you. This will be part of the exam you get with be in this sheet. Oh, good. That would be absolutely terrifying. <laughs> yeah, because I'm looking at just that, not the entire thing, and good lord. So if you look at this, we're going to be doing integrals that look like, come on, that look like this. They're integrals from zero to infinity, We'll have some constant. There's no constant shown here because, you know, constants don't matter in an integral. They just stay where they are. So you just bring your constant outside the integral. X raised to some power. Now, in our case, X is V. X is the speed. Okay. E raised to some coefficient times X squared. Notice it's a negative coefficient. Negative A X squared. So... If it had a positive exponent, then A would be a negative value. If it has a negative exponent, A is a positive value. 
So for that, the math we're not doing, we can tackle this first by integrating by parts. You now know what integration by parts is, right? You just stayed out of Cal 2? Not too long ago, yes. And so if you integrate by parts, you get, hey, look. Notice this was integrated by parts, not once, twice. <laughs> um, actually, was it twice? Yeah, maybe it was just uh, once. Like um, but you have I sub N, that is, the N was the power of X out front, is equal to some number times I sub N minus two. So that means you have to have two starting values, and then you can use that for everyone after. You have to know what I zero is and what I one is. If you know I zero and I one, then you can build up to any other value. Now, how do you get I one? That one's the easy one. Just let u equal um, ax squared. So du is 2ax dx. Okay. I'm Sorry, gonna... I was looking elsewhere kind of confused, but what were you saying? <laughs> that u equal... ax squared. Oh, yeah. No problem. So du is equal to 2a x dx. Yep. And so that means that this right here, can, well, let me use the highlighter and erase that blue that I made, that x dx is equal to du over 2a. And so what you have is the integral from zero to infinity of one over. You get that. Um, right, I, I just did my substitution that AX is U, so that's why instead of E to the minus AX squared, it, or a, excuse me, AX squared is U. So instead of E to the minus AX squared, it's E to the minus U. And then since the X DX is DU over um, 2A. Here, just a second. I need to shuffle things around on paper to see what's actually going on. Okay. Okay, so I've got x and dx there, there. So let's squish those together. So then 1 over 2a times du equals x dx. I'm not seeing how x dx gets canceled. Oh, um, okay. Oh wait, no, wait, wait, wait. I see it, I see it. Okay. Because you because you haven't written out the one over two a times e to the negative u times du, you just have one over two a times du, which equals your x dx. Okay. Well, would it have been quicker for you if I just done it this way? Yes, that would have been far quicker. <laughs> Sorry. Because that I saw. I didn't see the whole the other thing. Yeah. And so then you just have the integral of an exponential, which you divide by the derivative of the exponent, the derivative of the exponent minus one. Mm -hmm. So just divide by that and you have e minus e to the minus u over 2a um, going from zero to infinity. And so at infinity, e to the minus infinity is zero. And at zero, e to the minus zero is one. And so you just get the one. Um, how does the negative cancel out? Um, because it's upper limit minus lower limit. So you have minus the negative. Right. Okay, so that one's kind of easy, right? Sure. That's how you find I1. We started with that because it's easy. Will that be provided on the... Oh, yeah, this whole sheet will be provided. And what you have to do, be able to use is this. But I want you to see that there is some rhyme or reason to this, that it's not just random. Is, believe me. Yeah. 
So find I0, that's a little bigger of a job. To find I0, well, we've got the integral written out there. <sighs> what did they do Wait, here? Why are we doing I squared sub zero? That's a good question. So there's I0 and there's I0, right? He used X in one and Y in the other so you don't get the two integrals confused. That makes sense. And then he combines the exponents. Why? Why? Well, this is the volume over two-dimensional Gaussian curve. All right. Well, I, I just, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so I'll just say their calculus is sound because I've never seen this before. <laughs> so he changed X squared plus Y squared to R. And that makes sense because it's a circle. And you have, notice this isn't just R out here anymore, or actually not just R. Um, I R. Yeah, they, that comes from changing to polar coordinates. Yep, yep. And then this is something that can be done, because after all, we just did that integral here. We did? Yeah, right, we have R e to the minus A R squared. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm still a bit confused on why we can do the whole shifting around. I understand the change in the exponent, but I don't understand where the 2 pi r came from. The, or the 1 fourth out front. Okay, so, so yeah, this and this. Um, I did not go through and do the, the conversion to polar coordinates before class to repair on it, but it is part of saying, okay, we are going, from going to, to use r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So yep. we're now, instead of going here and here, we're saying we have this. And so we have that. And then right. shifting into polar coordinates is what is fundamentally being done here. And that's where the factor of pi comes in. Okay. And if, if you look at it carefully, that's actually pi over 2, right? Yeah, it's one quarter, one quarter 2 pi. That's pi r. And so, um, like I said, I didn't go through this thing here today. I've done it in the past. And so I, I can't take its word at it. I, I can't give you a better explanation right now. Okay. Just but what you end up with is I zero squared is pi over four A. And so you square root both sides and have I zero is square root of pi over four. All right. So with those now, we have everything we need. So we have this box that is, that's the payoff. So what we're gonna to need to do for all of our Gaussian integrals is to rewrite the integral so it's I subscript something times a constant. And then we use this box to determine what that I is. So we're gonna do this a number of times today. Okay, why did they change from pi over 4a to 1 half root pi over a? Um, because 1 over square root of 4 is 1 half, and they decided to. Right, they could have written this like this. It's exactly the same thing. That's right. just the, the author's desire. Oh, okay, that's because it's I squared sub O. Right, this was I squared there, yeah. So that's why you had to do the square root. Okay, so I, I probably should have gone through this part right here to prepare because obviously it is a question of reasonable where did it come from, but I didn't. Okay, so. Just take it at fixed value and go with it. The importance of the maximal voltage distribution, I already have said, but have it up here, it's the result of statistical calculations. So it's just pure statistics is where it comes from. And it gives the probability of speed as a function of temperature. And what, what, what should the probability of being at rest be? Obviously zero. Zero, because you, you have all these things colliding You'll have one that maybe occasionally hits zero, but it's not going to stay there. Yeah, not going to stay there. And infinite speed, obviously zero. Those, if we check the equation, we can verify those are the are what you get because if you just look at this equation, 
at v equals zero, you have constant v squared e to the minus v squared. I'll just put over a constant there. So what's important is we have at zero, we have zero squared times e to the zero, which is zero times one, that whole thing's zero. Now, if v is infinite, then v squared is infinite. But because it's a negative. e to the minus v squared is zero, we have an infinity times a zero. What's the value of infinity times zero? Well, the way I think about it is if v is infinity and e is raised to a negative infinity, that's going to be an infinitesimal infinitesimally small number that's not zero. And so then if you're multiplying that infinitesimally small zero, that's not a number that's not zero times another infinity, it's still going to be infinitesimally small. Okay. The, the way to answer the question is, the, the way I stated, you were specific to this, I was general. Uh, zero times infinity is indeterminate. It's not undefined, it's indeterminate. That means you do some work, you can determine it. Where it's undefined means you can't find it. So what you do is, as physicists, we say, which one is growing faster? V squared or E2 to the V squared? Right, because basically we have V squared over E to the V squared. And the exponential is a faster growing function than V to the two power. Yep. So because the exponential is a faster growing function, then that means it's going to dominate as v gets large. Yeah. And so it's going to go to its value of zero. It's the same thing as saying that n raised to a constant mm -hmm. is going to grow slower than a constant raised to n. Right. Where n is on a scale from 1 to infinity. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you said from 1 to infinity. It actually needs to be bigger than 1. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, yes. you just finished discussing series and, and calculus. Oh, so you're, you're down with that. Yeah. Now, what is the method you would use in calculus to verify what I said the way we physicists tend to do it? We talk about the orders of infinity and, and, e, and exponential is a higher order of infinity than e squared is. But how would we do that calculus space? Uh, That's right. You just use L'Hopital's rule. We have v squared over e to the minus v squared divided by the constant. And so you just take the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of v squared divided by the derivative of e to the v squared over constant. On top you have 2v on bottom, you still have <laughs> x next with a v out front. Right. Still indeterminate. Yeah. And so you actually, 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 actually I take that back. You have a v out front, you have a v on top, these cancel, and then there's one over a bit. It's not in that Okay, yeah. because yeah. these cancel. Okay, so right. okay. I've seen, so you got to go another time. Thank you, well, you don't. Because the second time you have v e to the v squared, and it's harder to do during Yeah. Bam, these cancel, and you're done after one. Go tell us. Okay. Other things about this. The most likely speed, average speed, and RMS speed are all different. And so we're going to find those values. Okay, what does that mean by the most likely speed and the average speed? Aren't those the same? No. Most likely speed is the mode. Average speed is the mean. Mode mean different than yes. You take steps, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I figure it's easiest to go that way. So we're going to find these things. First, the sum of the probabilities. If I had one particle and I added up the probability of having all of the different possible speeds, what would the sum of all the probabilities come to? That speed of the particle. Just the one particle. Well, I don't know the speed of particle. I'm saying I have one particle and it has like a 10% chance of this speed and 20% chance of this speed. Oh, okay. If I add all of those probabilities up, not speed times probability, okay. just add all the probabilities. Like it should be 100. It should, it should come to one. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Just like that whole problem. Right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the sum of the probabilities should be one. So let's start with that. What is the sum of the probabilities? Actually, I think I have that as my second problem, but we'll start with, we'll, it. We'll start with it. So the sum of the probabilities. So here is the probability right there. And I want to add up all of the probabilities. 
So notice this here is a much easier way of writing that same equation. So much easier. <laughs> yes, so much easier. So if I want to find the total probability, what do I do? You lead me. Um, want to find the total probability. Isn't it a summation of something? Or it's a summation, but this is continuous. Right, so it's going to be natural because we're finding the total area under a certain curve. Yeah, we're finding the area under this curve. That's exactly right. Um, so then wouldn't it just be the integral of bb squared e to the negative ab squared? Eb. With limits going from? 0 to 50. Okay, now our first chance to use our newfound calculus wisdom as written on your page. Yes. Right. What is this in terms of I, where I is one of these integrals here? In terms of I? Right, the first in the box, that first line, I sub n. Yeah, it's I sub n with B out in front of the integral. Okay, so I'm going to have B out front. I sub what? What is n? No. no. Look, look at look at this page. What is n on this page? It's what? Two. Two. That's right, because n is the exponent of my v. So that's what I need to do. So I need to find what i sub two is. So what is i sub two? Well, i sub two. No. If you look in the box, I sub n, yeah. right, we have I sub 0 and I sub 1. So if we get I sub 0, I sub 1, we're done. We don't have one of those. So we go to the bottom one. I sub n is equal to n minus 1. So n here was 2, so it's going to be 2 minus 1, divided by 2a times I sub n minus 2. So because 2 is n, then that's just going to be times I sub 0. Right. 2 minus 1 is 1. So it's 1 over 2a. I said that's a 0. I put a because I was thinking about Oops. Okay. Now what's i sub 0? i sub 0 is 1 half root pi over a. So let's squish it right away. 1 times 1 over 4a root pi over 4. Okay, so that's what I2 is. Right. And what is B? A constant. Uh, that. B is this thing. Yes. And A is this thing. So we have to plug both of those in. How did we determine that that's A? Um, just because that's the thing that V squared was multiplied by. Okay. Right, if you take this right here, we have minus... 1 half mv squared over kt equals minus a v squared. And so we found a by just taking all of the stuff that wasn't the minus or the v squared. That's it. Oh, okay. I see that. So now we just have to put all that in. So I, it's easier said than done. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Just M over two. I I'm gonna I'm gonna change the my magnification here so I can see both at the same time. It'll just oh, save okay. us a lot of time. M over two k t times root pi over m over two k. Okay, and I should have put out here b i squared is what I'm or i two is what I'm doing. So I'm putting the i two first. Yeah. Um, square root of pi over m over two k okay so all of that is i2 right. and then i have to multiply that by b and b is the big mess out front the m over two i k t raised to three halves well notice i have a bunch of different ways of writing actually i should have it's quicker I have a bunch of different ways of writing it because it's quicker. Hold on. I'm going to put this. I'm going to combine all my. It's 
if we look at this, notice B is 4A square root of A over pi. Yep, I got it. That's 1 over B. Yep. So B times I2 is B times 1 over B. That's your quickest way. I was going to do that all hard like, and I realized, wait a minute. <laughs> it's So BI2 is 1. B times I2 is 1. So that means the total probability comes out to be 1. Because we had said right here that bi2 was our total probability. Okay, hold on. Still working things out. All right, so I've got that times root 8 over pi times root 8 over pi times 4 pi, 4 pi, 4 is 10, 5 is 10, 1 is 10, 1 is 4 a. Okay, that I understand. Let's see, I understand that i sub 0 times 1 over 2 a bit. How does that equal 1 over B again? Okay, so so B, these are different ways of writing B. Right here was the straight definition. Right. But then using the fact that this thing in parentheses is just, oh, is just A over pi. That one thing. So because that 1 over 4A times root pi over A is reciprocal of 4A times root pi over pi. I'm ready to learn. <laughs> <laughs> we can Grab that this. sheet right there. Simply one over B. Okay, yeah. I understand. It's just reciprocal stuff. So we found total probability is one. Yeah. Good, because if it wasn't, we would know we have a mistake. Right. So that's that's kind of a sanity calculation. Now let's do the most probable speed. Most probable. How do you determine the most probable? You have a bunch of probabilities. How do you determine which one's the biggest? That's the average, right? No. Is it mode? It's the mode. That's right. You can send that over. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, how do you have the mode? I think it's like... Well, the curve, the calculus. What, what does it mean to me? This is a probability curve. What does it mean to be most probable? Well, if, if you have a probability curve, what does the probability curve look like if you're the most probable? And you're stuck in yeah, it's going to be the highest point. The most probable is the place with the highest probability. Okay. And so, can you tell me where it is on the curve? B prime. Yeah, B prime. Yeah, surprisingly enough. Because at the highest point, in calculus we always say, at the highest point, the blank is blank. The slope is zero. zero. Mm -hmm. At the highest point, the slope is zero. So how do we find that most probable speed? Right, because... <laughs> We're not going to just point to it on the graph and say, there, I found it. As much as the memes might say that, you know, find X person circles it. Here it is. Um, um, I don't know what you put in It the has to do something with the, the, the equation is this equation here. Not set that equal to zero. It's not the, the, the most probable speed is not where the probability is zero. It's where it's the slope the is zero. The derivative of that is zero. So that just means I'm going to take df dv and set that equal to zero at v p for probable. And so if I do the derivative, and of course we're going to do the lower form there because it's much simpler for me to write out. So it's going to be 2v v um, and then isn't that Okay, so we, we have to do what rule? What rule are you doing? Not chain, product. Don't remember I told you about my mistake when I was in calculus getting the two confused and making an infinite problem that the teacher told everyone about as he was handing back the test. It, no, it, it was pretty funny. I laughed too. Okay, so we did the product rule. So we did the derivative of the first times the second. Now we have to do the first. times the derivative of the second. Well, if you do the derivative of an exponential, you just bring down the derivative of the exponent. So what's the derivative of the exponent? Now the derivative of the exponent is negative 2VA. That's the derivative of the exponent, right? The derivative of minus AV squared. Oh, I see. And then we still have the e to the minus A 
v squared. Now notice I changed all of these to VPs here because I'm evaluating it at V equals V most probable. Because this is not a generally true equation. It's going to be the equation that tells me what the most probable speed is. So factor out what we can. We factor out a B. We can factor out a VP. We can factor out an E to the minus A VP squared. We're left with 2 plus, well, plus VP times minus two. Okay, VP squared. I went ahead and factored out this VP, so that was state of VP squared. Um, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so when is that equal to zero? Okay, we're only looking for VP. Um, you said if A is equal to 1, we still have the VP there. We're, we're solving for VP. Let, let, me, let me lead this in the direction I want to go. And so I will point out that there are three terms with VP in them. Okay, so. If any one of those terms is 0, the whole thing is 0. So looking at the first term, Randy, looking at the first term, what value of VP makes it equal to zero? This is a really simple redundant type question. It zero. Yes. I had to specify that because you might sit there and think there's got to be something more than the obvious. Yeah, you can't have VP be zero, but that's like right. This is the minimum, or it's a minimum, right? Because this method gives you maxima or minima. So it's a solution, but it's not our solution. Okay, so David, the next term. What value for VP makes e to the minus AVP squared equal to zero? Or VP to the minus something. We already talked about this actually. As VP approaches infinity, yeah. e to the minus VP squared is approaching zero. Mm -hmm. So it's equal approaching infinity, right? You can't equal infinity, so that's why. But that's. Erase that equal sign, and now it's perfect. But that can't be our answer. Because right, that can't be our answer because that's also a zero. That's also a minimum. So we have two minima, great. Obviously, the last one is our only answer that's going to be the maximum. Right. So, the last one. So, that one's going to take a little more work, right? Maybe. It's going to be 2 over negative. I could have factored out the 2, right? A. Okay. I just my head. Well, I just factored out the 2. That's all I did. Not two something. VP squared has to be one over A. Right, because we have to have one minus A VP squared equals a. zero. So one equals A VP squared. So VP squared equals one over A. There's the sequence that takes you from this to that. So VP squared is one over A. So what's the V most probable? And so then we put in the A, which conveniently I erased. A is M over 2KT. So one over A is 2KT over M. So that's our most probable speed. So square root 2kt over m. I'm going to come up here to our first picture. This is the only place I had the picture, right? Or did I have it here? No, I have it everywhere. <laughs> so v probable 
is equal to square root of 2 kt over m. And we're going to leave it at that right now. Notice I have the relationship between v most probable and the, the average speed written on here, but we will check those out when we're all done. Okay, um, really quick. K is the constant, T is the temperature, and M is the mass. K is the, the Boltzmann constant, T is the temperature. What units are you going to use? Huh? What units are you going to use for temperature? Kelvins. Oh. M is the mass of, since it's K, it's the mass of a molecule. Okay. If it had been R, it would have been mass of a So there's the most probable speed. Now, that's the easiest calculus we're going to do today. I, well, it was easy, right? We, we just had to take a derivative. And you know, I was just talking with Lisa Keen yesterday, I think it was. And yeah, yeah, derivatives are the easy part of calculus. It's the integrals where it hits you in the head. So let's do that. Let's find the average speed. Now let's think about average speed. If I have the probabilities, let's say I'm taking a test, an exam. So you guys all took the exam. How do I find the average score in the exam? Add them all up divide by how many exams there were. Okay, you add them all up, you divide by how many exams there were. Now, when you get to statistics, instead of adding them all up, you say, okay, I have a probability. Let's say I had 30 tests and one person got 100%. So the probability of 100% was 1 over 30. And let's say two people got 97%. So that probably would be 2 over 30, right? And so if I take the probability of each one, and multiply by the score, what I have is the number of people who got it times the score divided by the total. And then if I add all of those up, I have the equation you guys set. And so what we do to make it simpler is we add up the probability of each score, and then we're done. Okay. So we have a function for the probability of each speed. Yep. And so we just add up the probability of each speed times the speed. But this is continuous speed, so instead of doing a summation, what do we do? Continuous. Uh, integrate. 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 Right, remember, sigma is the symbol for sum, <laughs> s is the symbol for integral, because they're both adding it up. They both stand for sum. So. We just got the like, series test. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was telling me. <laughs> so we're going to have the average speed. And we indicate average with this greater than, less than. That means average or mean. So average of the speed is the integral from 0 to infinity of f of v times v dv. Times v because we want to find the average of the speed. Before, before you got here, Randy, we calculated the total probability. So we did the integral of f of v dv. Just adding up all the probabilities. And we showed that that gave us 1. Now we're adding up the probabilities times speed to get the average speed. So I replace my f of v and that's going to be b v squared e to the minus a v squared, right? That's my f of v right there times v dv going from zero to infinity. Now, Randy, this is the first time you've gone through one of these calculations, so I'm going to lean on you the most so you learn the hardest. Okay. So what we have to do, if you look at that page I gave you, that page, the, the payoff is what's in the box. You have I subscript N, where N is the exponent of your variable. In that case, the variable is X. What's the variable here? Okay, so you've got to be able to make the transition in your head and not say, I don't have any X's, I can't use this. So what you need to do is rearrange this integral, take out the constant, and identify it's b times i subscript what. So if I take this out, that's take out the b, then I'm going to have integral of v squared times v, v cubed, e to the minus a v squared dv. What is this? looking at your table for the definitions of i. Yeah, just in the box, just in the box. Everything he needs in the box. The, everything else is telling you how you got there. Oh, uh, my x is going to be um, 
Yeah, my answer is going to be that's just about but, but well, but what is what is this integral in terms of i? That's i subscript what? I subscript n is equal to n or right. I subscript n is equal to three integral. Minus, you want me to get the numbers? Three minus one. Well, actually, we're going to go there next. Okay. okay. I, I, I just want what I this is. This is I subscript to what? But what is N? N is V. N is the power of V. What's the power of V in this equation? Three. Three. That's what I was, that's what I was shooting for. Just make sure you can identify. This is B times I3. Now I'm going to use that table to find I3, and you've already identified how we do that. I3, and so I'm going to do this separately instead of in that. I3 is equal to N3 minus 1 over, was it 2A? 2A. I to the N minus 2. Of course, 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that's just 1 over A. And I to the 3 minus 2 is I1. So it's 1 over A times I1. So that's what I3 is. So now I can put that in here. Oops, I1. But what is I1? It's what? Uh, 1 over 2a. 1 over 2a squared. OK, and I've got a. Actually, I've got it right here. Yes, it's one of two. I just want to make sure because <laughs> it seemed too simple. So we now just have to substitute for B and A. And we'll find our average speed. So I look at what B is. And B, I have three different forms of this for B, depending on what I'm going to be doing. I have A squared. So A squared is going to be, actually, it's over A squared. So I'm going to have on top 4K squared, T squared over M squared. I'm going to use this form here again, just because I can cancel some A's. So I'm going to put in for B, 4A square root of a over pi. Well, 4 over 2, that part was easy. Yeah. And if you look at this, you can cancel out one of the a's in the denominator. So you have 2 root a over pi over a. Well, the, the square root is going to be a multiplied because of them up or something like that. No, that's only if it's inside. Correct. Yeah. Okay, this is, this is what David said, correct? Yes. Now I'm going to move everything inside the square root. Why? Because I want to look like my other answers. Okay, so what does 2 become when I put it in the square root? And then I have a over pi divided by a. What's 1 over a going to look like when I put it in the square root? a squared. It's going to be 1 over a squared. Right. And so I'm going to have a over a squared pi, which makes this. Okay, so I made my square root thing way bigger than I needed, right? Now, finally. Invert, multiply. Nope, that's not A. A is M over 2KT, isn't it? Yep. Okay, could you uh, do longhand on how you got from the two root A over pi over A? Yeah. I'm a bit confused on how you just kind of jumped there. Okay, so that's 2 over A. Putting it inside the square root, I have 4 over A squared. So yes, the two became two inside the square root was a four. Oh, I see. Oh, and, okay, okay. and over a inside the square root was over a squared. Right. And of course, that's the same 
as combining them under one square root and having Five, then one, the a, the denominator cancels out, one up top cancels out. Okay. Four, eight, five. Four, eight. Okay. Okay. My key here is to make sure you understand how we're getting here, right. not just to say, hey, I got the answer. Come on now. Right. Okay. So now all we have to do is plug in my a. I've moved over so far I can't even admit it on this. I will move over to the left. Nice. So there I just substitute in A. Of course, divide by a fraction, invert and multiply. Okay, I, I wrote it differently. I put 8 over pi times kt over n. Is there a specific reason? Yeah, because all of them have kt over m in them. And so this is, how far did I go? Okay. Dang. Now remember, from the last one, the last one up here, we had square root of two. Right. So the difference in these two is one had square root of two and one had square root of eight over pi. Mm -hmm. Now for the last one, the RMS speed, for the RMS speed, what, what does RMS mean? Um, okay, it's root mean squared and the process is the reverse order. So the first thing you do is you square it. So I'm going to have V squared, then you mean it, and then you do the square root. So the first thing I'm going to do then is calculate the mean of the speed squared, and then I'll square root that answer. So can't we just take our answer from the previous and square that? Nope. Remember I did in class the example 1, 2, and 3. The mean of 1, 2, and 3 is 2. But the root mean squared is going to be the mean of the square, so that would be 1 plus 4 plus 9, which is, which is 14, and then you square root 14. And so the RMS is always big. What did you say? You said the root mean squared or something like that? Yeah, it's root mean squared, right? So the first thing you do is you square your property. So square the speed. Right. Then we find the mean. And then finally you do the root. The square. Not what you root. Right. Right. So if I'm gonna find this V average or the square of V the average of V squared, what's that integral gonna look like? Isn't that gonna be the previous equation squared? No. I'm going to have now instead of v dv, I'm going to have v squared dv because I'm taking the, the weight, the weighting factor, the probability times v squared and adding them all up. Oh, yeah. And so since my, my function has a v squared out front, so it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be exactly that. Because of time, do you see why you said that, Randy? No. Okay, then, then I will write up. So we have the integral of bv squared e to the minus av squared. And then I have times v squared because we're doing the v squared dv. So then and so factor out or bring out the b because it's a constant. Integral from 0 to infinity. v squared times v squared is v to the fourth e to the minus a v squared dv. And then just like I had to do before, what is that integral, Randy? Uh, that's the whole I squared 
Except for this time, it's not I3, it's I4, because you have the raised to the fourth power. Does that mean that we're going to have to do I sub n twice, finish and finish off with I sub 0? If, if you had started fresh, yes. But we've already did, done what I sub 2 is. Right? We, we know that using that equation, I sub 4 is equal to 4 minus 1 over 2A I sub 4 minus 2. Two which is equal to 3 over 2a i sub 2. But we have already worked out that, excellent, that i sub 2 was equal to 1 over b. Right? That's okay. i sub 2. And so I can, because we've already done that, this problem is much shorter. So in reality, it just goes down to 3 over 2a. Yes. Well, that's nice. Much. And so that means that the RMS is equal to the square root of that. It's the square root of 3 halves a. Square root of 3 over 2 times 2kt over m. Those twos cancel. So yep. That so, was easier than most. <laughs> well, it wasn't easier. We, it was easier because we had already done half of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> if we hadn't already done half of it, it would have been just as tough as the rest. So what we have found now to summarize is that the most probable was equal to the square root of, was it 2kt over m? And v um, average was equal to the square root of 8 over pi kt over m. And v rms is equal to the square root of 3 kt over m. And so if you know one, you can instantly calculate the other because you have these fixed relationships. If you have an ideal gas that is, you know, free to move in all directions, so you have maximum voltage distribution applies. Ideal gas. What ring? Ideal gas. That's the condition. Um, yeah, it needs to be an ideal gas. But th there is also the kind of configuration you're in like you know if you're if you're firing a a gun the gas in the barrel is not going to be explained by this because of the the constraints all right have a good hour and a half and i'll see you for lab yo yeah so oh i got i need to not say that nathan gets annoyed <laughs> so lab has no